Many feel that some rich European nations have some sort of superiority complex when dealing with poor, developing or formerly colonized nations. For example, some even felt that the German Chancellor's comments concerning India's pharma sector were disrespectful. But before making any quick judgments, it's better to try to understand Germany's desperation. And to do that, let's explore the brutal reality and the reasons behind the pain of this European nation, which are often overlooked due to its carefully projected shiny image. Point number one, inequality and poverty. There is a massive gap between the richest and the poorest in Germany. Data from DIW Berlin shows that the wealthiest 10% in Germany own around 66% of all individual net assets. And as far as the bottom half of the population is concerned, data from Bundesbank shows that 50% of Germany's population own just 2.5% of the country's overall wealth. Not only that, in 2020, it was revealed that every fifth child in Germany grows up in poverty. Point number two, rising healthcare costs and Germany's inhumane treatment of its elderly people. Rising healthcare costs and increasing poverty in elderly Germans have contributed to the departure of thousands of elderly and sick Germans to the nursing home of other nations, as their children or caretakers have failed to keep their own parents and elderly at their homes or even in the German retirement centers. Yes, this may sound very cruel and tragic, but these parents or grandparents in Germany have been exported in the last phase of their lives to other nations. Point number three, foreign labor exploitation and Germany's desperation to take immigrants to stop its economic downfall. Germany's poor birth rate, aging population and the severe shortage in its labor market mean that today the lifeline of the German economy desperately depends on continued immigration and the foreign workforce. This report forecasts that every year Germany will need around 260,000 immigrants to enter its labor market, out of which a massive 146,000 immigrants will be required from non-European countries. Yes, for its own survival, Germany needs foreign talent and workforce. For example, engineers and IT specialists come from India, nurses come from Poland and the Philippines, and doctors are taken from all over the world. Not only that, hundreds of thousands of foreign seasonal workers are brought every year to Germany. And yes, how can we forget those undocumented migrant cleaners who clean German streets or toilets while facing severe abuse, wage theft and exploitation? This report from the German Institute for Human Rights reveals chilling details of migrant labor abuse that include threats, violence, a lot of unpaid overtime, no insurance, and even wages of 2 to 3 euros an hour. This ongoing horrific abuse and discrimination can easily remind one of the brutal chapters of untouchability and the caste system in Germany that the so-called dishonorable people or unerliche Leute faced. Number 4. From the tag of the world's pharmacy to the tag of the brothel of Europe. Can we ask Germany if its priorities and the management of its available human resources have been good enough or not? After all, several decades ago, Germany had successfully emerged as the world's pharmacy. But today, things seem to be a bit different. According to Dietmar Roller, chairman of the German Office of the International Justice Mission, Germany is the brothel of Europe. The figures are humongous. 400,000 prostitutes, 3,000 red light establishments in the country and 500 brothels just in Berlin. Not only that, taxes on prostitution are an important source of income for some German cities. German expertise in creating profits and a business empire through prostitution can hardly be questioned. This is the country that converted prostitution into a thriving industry of nearly $18 billion in just a few years. Can you believe that? prostitution leading to annual revenues of $18 billion. To put that in perspective, as of today, the annual defense budget of only 15 countries can beat that number. The country's mega brothels, with their towering presence, have even become major landmarks of German cities. The 2002 legislation aimed to improve the conditions of these sex workers by offering them the opportunity to get registered for state services. But not too many came forward. 
This means that modern slavery, human trafficking, forced prostitution continued to thrive in Germany. The COVID-19 pandemic hit the German prostitution industry like a tsunami, leaving many prostitutes without work and prompting Germany's landmark brothel filing for bankruptcy. Now think of this. Germany complains of the shortage in its labor market. But then, with its more than 1 million men who pay for sex every day, with its 400,000 prostitutes, including many students and single mothers who auction themselves online to the highest bidders, as well as the 20,000 Germans who go abroad for child sex tourism yearly. Can anyone dare ask Germans if their actions and the management of their human resources have been appropriate? And how about human rights violations, human dignity and women empowerment? When impoverished students and single mothers in Germany auction their bodies online to the highest bidder, does this objectify women or not? After all, Germany tries to be at the forefront when it comes to women empowerment, right? Number 5. Germany's arrogance and its denial or reluctance regarding its own colonial history in Africa. Why is it that many of us don't even know that Germany also committed mass murder and genocide outside the European continent? Why is it that many Germans have no idea about Germany's brutal colonial empire in Africa? Yes. After the UK and France, between 1885 and 1919, Germany was the third largest European colonial power in Africa, which stretched from modern-day Namibia to the territory of today's Burundi, Rwanda and Tanzania, as well as areas in modern-day Togo, Ghana and Cameroon. In Africa, Germany committed one of the most effective genocides in history, as around 75% of the entire Herero population and some 50% of the Nama population was brutally killed. This involved concentration camps, mass atrocities and deaths through various forms of indescribable tortures. Not only that, thousands of skulls of the ethnic African Herero people were sent to Berlin for German scientists to examine for signs to prove the racial superiority of white Europeans. And guess what? Until July 2015, officials in Berlin even rejected the use of the word genocide to describe the killings of these Africans. But can we dare ask Germany why? Please know that the brutality that I have highlighted in this episode regarding Germany is just the tip of the iceberg. It may take hundreds of hours if I decide to talk about this country's present and past in detail. But despite all the shortcomings that Germany has, and despite Germany's overwhelming dependence on poorer and developing nations for its own survival, instead of feeling more grateful and showing more humility, why is it that Germany seems so arrogant when it engages with them? As a Polish girl who loves Germany and is concerned about Germany, I will be very happy if this country which has been regarded as the broad hall of Europe can someday reclaim the tag of world's pharmacy and become able to provide affordable medicines and vaccines to poorer countries just the way India has been doing for so many years. Germany and other Western nations know how important India is going to be to counterbalance China, and they seem to have no choice but to partner with India. Still, if this relationship between India and the Western nations has to succeed, it must be based on genuine mutual respect. We know that there is a long and painful history of the Western supremacist attitude, but at least for the sake of its own survival and its selfish geopolitical needs, the West should finally learn how to rid its superiority complex while engaging with developing or formerly colonized nations like India. And just in case the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, didn't know, yes, India's COVID-19 vaccines have also been sent to Namibia. See you again.